Hi, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Welcome to this video on discussion essays. Students can find it difficult to identify discussion essays and often confuse them with either opinion essays or advantages and disadvantages essays. This is one of the issues I'll be covering in this lesson. I'm also going to show you step by step how to plan and write discussion essays. Here's what we'll be covering. How to identify discussion essays, three common mistakes, the essay structure, how to plan, how to write an introduction, how to write main body paragraphs and how to write a conclusion. You'll find in-depth lessons on planning, writing introductions, main body paragraphs and conclusions on the website and in related videos. I've put links to these in the notes below this video. The first part of the discussion essay will be a statement containing two opposing views. You will then be asked to discuss both sides of the argument and give your own opinion. Here's some typical wording that might be used. Discuss both views and give your opinion. Discuss both these views and then give your own opinion. Discuss both sides of the argument and give your own opinion. Here's a question from a past test paper. Some people think that zoos are cruel and should be closed down. Others, however, believe that zoos can be useful in protecting wild animals. Discuss both views and give your opinion. Give reasons for your answer and include any relevant examples from your own knowledge or experience. Write at least 250 words. I'll be using this question to guide you through the process of planning and writing a discussion essay. The key to identifying this type of question is the fact that you're required to discuss both views. This is different to opinion questions where you must decide between two opposing views and make an argument to support your own opinion. Opinion essays, also known as agree or disagree essays, are generally worded in one of these ways. What is your opinion? Do you agree or disagree? To what extent do you agree or disagree? The other type of essay that students mistake for discussion essays are advantages and disadvantages essays. With these, the statement will contain just one view and the question will typically be written as shown in this sample question. School children are using computers in school more than ever. Discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this and give your own opinion. The consequence of incorrectly identifying the question type is that you will use the wrong structure for your essay. This is a major reason why people make the mistakes we'll now look at. The three most common errors made by students are not giving your opinion, not giving arguments for both views and not developing both sides of the argument equally. The most common mistake that students make is the first one, not giving their opinion. The question will clearly state that you must choose one side of the argument to agree with. If you fail to do this, you will get a low score for task achievement. It doesn't matter which side of the argument you take, or even that you actually agree with it. However, you must give equal attention to both sides. A common error is to provide a stronger argument for the view you favour. This leads to an unbalanced essay and a low score for task achievement. Now let's look at a simple structure you can use to write discussion essays. It's not the only possible structure, but it's the one I recommend because it's easy to learn and will enable you to quickly plan and write a high level essay. This structure will give you a well balanced essay with four paragraphs. We now need some ideas to add into the structure and we'll have everything we need for our essay. Pause the video and spend a few moments studying it. Next, we come to the planning stage. Many students are reluctant to spend valuable time planning their essay, but it will only take around five minutes and will save you time in the long run. Here are four important reasons why you should plan your essay before you start writing. It will save you time, it ensures that you fully answer the question, it leads to a better essay structure and it results in fewer grammatical errors. 
There are four important things to do in the planning stage. Analyse the question, decide on your opinion, generate ideas and choose some vocabulary to use. Analysing the question is an essential step in the planning process and will ensure that you answer the question fully. It's quick and easy to do. You just need to identify three different types of words. Topic words, other keywords and instruction words. We've already considered the instruction words of our sample question, which are discuss both views and give your opinion. So we'll focus on the topic words and other keywords. Topic words are the ones that identify the general subject of the question. I've highlighted them for you here. So this question is about zoos. Many people do this first step of the process and then write about the topic in general. This is a serious mistake and leads to low marks for task achievement. What we need to do now that we know the general topic is to understand exactly what aspect of zoos we're being asked to write about. The other key words in the question tell you the specific topic you must write about. They define the opinions stated in the statement. By highlighting these words, it's easy to see that you're being asked to write about the opposing views that zoos are cruel and should be closed down, and that zoos can be useful in protecting wild animals. Your essay must only include ideas relevant to these ideas. Next, you must decide which of the two opinions you are going to support. As already mentioned, it doesn't matter if you genuinely agree with the view you take in your essay or not. Discussion essays are about your ability to write a well-structured essay in the English language and you will not be assessed on any opinion you might hold. So choose one view and make sure that your opinion is clear throughout the essay. For this model essay, I'm going to agree with the statement that zoos are cruel and should be closed down. The next task is to generate some ideas to write about. There are several different ways to think up ideas. I cover them fully on the web page and in the video on task 2 essay planning that I mentioned earlier. We're going to use the friends technique. This is my preferred method as it allows you to take a step back from the stress of the exam situation and to think more calmly. Here's how it works. Imagine you're chatting with a friend and they ask you the question in a casual conversation. What answers would you give them off the top of your head? Plan your essay around these ideas. Doing this will help you to come up with simple answers in everyday language rather than straining your brain to think of amazing ideas with high level language which isn't necessary. Here are my ideas. Pause the video to read them through. I've got more ideas here than I need so I'm going to pick two topics to develop in the essay, one for each of the main body paragraphs. For the first idea I've chosen cramped cages, unnatural environments and distressed animals. For the second idea I've gone for breeding programs for endangered species, some species saved from extinction. We're almost ready to start writing our discussion essay, but first we have one other small task to do. In an IELTS essay, it's important to be able to say the same thing in different ways, either by paraphrasing and or using synonyms. During the planning stage, quickly jot down a few synonyms of key words you could use to save you having to stop and think of the right language while you're writing. For example, for zoos we could use animals in captivity, collections of wild animals, menagerie or wildlife park. For cruel, we could use to cause suffering or inhumane. For protection, safeguard or preserve. And for animals, creatures or species. With that done, we can focus on the first paragraph of the essay, the introduction. A good introduction to a discussion essay has a simple three-part structure. The paraphrased question, an outline statement stating the two opposing views, and a thesis statement in which you give your own opinion. The introduction should have two to three sentences, be 40 to 60 words long and take five minutes to write. 
Start your introduction by paraphrasing the statement sentence of the question. Here's the statement. Some people think that zoos are cruel and should be closed down. Others, however, believe that zoos can be useful in protecting animals. There are various phrases you can use to do this. Here are three examples. They all say the same thing using different language. Some people argue that, while others say that, it is considered by some, while there are others who think, it is often argued that, whilst others disagree and think, Choose one and add the details in the question statement in a paraphrased form. I recommend putting the view you don't agree with first. So here's one way you could paraphrase this statement. Some people argue that zoos help to preserve wild creatures, while others say that they are inhumane and should be abolished. Note my use of synonyms. You don't have to replace every word but do so where possible whilst ensuring that your language sounds natural. There aren't many suitable synonyms of zoo that I can think of, so I've repeated this word from the statement. Now we need to add an outline statement, where you outline the two main points that you'll cover in the rest of the essay. That's ideas one and two that I chose earlier. And a thesis statement, where you state your opinion. Often you can combine these in one sentence, as I'm going to do in our sample essay. Here's my sentence. While the development of breeding programmes contributes to the preservation of endangered species, I believe that the poor conditions that many animals held in captivity are kept in make the existence of zoos unacceptable. Pause the video if you want to spend a few minutes studying it. We'll now bring these three elements of our introduction together. Some people argue that zoos help to preserve wild creatures, while others say that they are inhumane and should be abolished. While development of breeding programmes contributes to the preservation of endangered species, I believe that the poor conditions that many animals held in captivity are kept in makes the existence of zoos unacceptable. This introduction achieves three important functions. It shows the examiner that you understand the question, it acts as a guide to the examiner as to what your essay is about and it also helps to keep you focused and on track as you write. The two ideas in your introduction will become your two main body paragraphs. In main body paragraph 1 we'll write about breeding programmes for endangered species with some species safe from extinction. And main body paragraph 2 will be about cramped cages, unnatural environments and distressed animals. Main body paragraphs in discussion essays should contain three things. A topic sentence, an explanation and an example. It's easy to begin by discussing the opinion you don't agree with and then present the reasons for the opposing view that you support. So we'll start with idea one. The topic sentence summarises the main idea of the paragraph. That's all it needs to do so it doesn't have to be complicated. It plays an important role in ensuring that your ideas flow logically from one to another. It does this by acting as a signpost for what's to come next, that is, what the paragraph will be about. If you maintain a clear development of ideas throughout your essay, you'll get a high mark for task achievement and cohesion and coherence. We'll now take the idea for our first main body paragraph, and create our topic sentence. Main idea one is breeding programmes for endangered species with some species being saved from extinction. Here's the idea summarised into a topic sentence. On the one hand, there are many projects in existence in zoological parks around the world where species facing extinction are successfully bred in captivities and their numbers increased substantially. Next, we must write an explanation sentence that expands on the idea. This explains to the examiner what we mean, or why this is the case. Here's one way we could write it. This is important for ensuring the survival of animals under threat from poaching and the destruction of their natural environments. 
Finally, we add an example to support our main point. If you can't think of a real example, it's fine to make one up as long as it's believable. The examiner isn't going to check your facts. Here's my example. A good example of this is the golden lion tamarind from Brazil, which nearly died out because of logging and mining activities, which are destroying its habitat. Today, a third of wild gold lion tamarinds were raised in captivity. That's the three parts of the first main body paragraph complete. Here's the finished paragraph. I've colour coded it to highlight them. Pause the video and read the paragraph so that you can hear how the three parts flow from one to another. We'll now follow the same process with our second main body paragraph. First, we write the topic sentence to summarise the main idea. I started main body paragraph one with the phrase on the one hand, so main body paragraph two will naturally begin, on the other hand, these are great cohesive devices to use when making a direct contrast between two opposing views, and they link the ideas together well. They can be used in most discussion essays, and will help you to earn a good score for cohesion and coherence. The main idea for main body paragraph two is cramped cages, unnatural environments, and animals distressed. And here's this idea summarised as a topic sentence. On the other hand, a significant percentage of zoos house their animals in cramped cages with very little space to move around or behave naturally. Now for the explanation sentence to explain and expand this idea. Here's one way we could write it. This can lead to them becoming distressed and depressed as well as suffering physically through lack of exercise. Finally, an example to support this point. As I mentioned before, you can make one up if you need to, as I have here. Just make sure that it's believable. Here's my example. A friend of mine recently visited a wildlife park while on holiday abroad and was very upset to see the lions pacing up and down in a narrow bare pen and eagles in enclosures so small that they were unable to fly. That's the three parts of our second main body paragraph complete. Here's the finished paragraph. Pause the video again and read through it. Now we need a conclusion and our discussion essay is done. Conclusions to discussion essays should do two things. Summarise the main points and state your opinion. This can generally be done in a single sentence. If you're below the minimum 250 words after you've written your conclusion, you can add a prediction or recommendation statement. Our essay currently has 231 words, so we're on target and don't need this extra sentence, but you can learn more about how to write a prediction or recommendation statement on my webpage about task 2 conclusions and in the related video. I put a link to them in the notes below this video. The conclusion is the easiest sentence in the essay to write, but one of the most important. A good conclusion will neatly end the essay, link all your ideas together, sum up your argument or opinion, and answer the question. If you achieve this, you'll improve your score for both task achievement and cohesion and coherence which together make up 50% of the overall marks. Without a conclusion, you'll score below band 6 for task achievement. You can start almost any final paragraph of a task 2 essay with either the words in conclusion or to conclude. Then, all you need to do is briefly summarise the main ideas into one sentence. Here's a top tip. Go back and read the introduction to the essay because this is also a summary of the essay. It outlines what you're going to write about. So, to create a great conclusion, you simply have to paraphrase the introduction. Let's give it a go. This is the introduction we wrote earlier. Some people argue that zoos help to preserve wild creatures, while others say that they are inhumane and should be abolished. While development of breeding programmes contributes to the preservation of endangered species, I believe that the poor conditions that many animals held in captivity are kept in makes the existence of zoos unacceptable. 
and here's the same information formed into a conclusion. In conclusion, although zoos do help to safeguard dwindling populations of particular species, the suffering experienced by many captive creatures due to unsuitable living conditions amounts to cruelty and they should not be allowed to exist. Pause the video and see if you can match the two main ideas in the two paragraphs. Note how I've paraphrased the information and used synonyms. That's it, we've completed our essay. Here it is with the four paragraphs put together. It's on this slide and the next one. I'll leave you to three through the whole essay yourself if you want to. Go through this lesson as many times as you need to in order to fully understand it and then put in lots of practice writing discussion essays from past exam papers. Take your time at first and gradually speed up until you can write and plan an essay of at least 250 words in the 40 minutes allowed in the exam. Practice is the only way you'll improve your skills. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you in another lesson soon. Goodbye for now.